This is the third video in my kind of mini tutorial on correlation analysis. The focus of this video is the pitfalls of relying blindly on the correlation statistic in your analyses. Okay, so here we are with some sample data. And this is a contrived example to be sure, but I wanted to set the frame of reference. So what you can see here is degrees Celsius on the x-axis and degrees Fahrenheit on the y-axis. And I've got some data points plotted and a line drawn. Now what we know from previous videos is that this is an example of perfect positive correlation. All of the data points on this scatter plot are in a straight line. And the straight line goes from the lower left to the top right. So we know this is perfect positive correlation. The correlation coefficient for this data is one. That's the highest positive value you can get with correlation, and it tells you that you have perfect positive correlation. Now, in practical terms, what does it mean to you as you're analyzing data when you see this? Well, what it tells you is that you can make perfect predictions based on the data. And that shouldn't come as a shock to anybody to know that, hey, if I know the degrees Celsius, I can perfectly predict the degrees Fahrenheit. There's in fact, there's even an equation for it. So perfect correlation is, perfect positive correlation is a great example of this line that goes from the lower left to the upper right. And it tells you that you can, based on the data, make perfect predictions. Now, in practical terms, there's one other aspect that you need to keep in mind, which is if you see this in your business data, you need to ask yourself what's going on. Because this kind of Perfection doesn't often happen in the real world, especially with business data. And if it does, it's usually an indication of some sort of problem. One, you got a data quality issue. That's very, very common. Or two, which is a little bit more subtle, but does happen from time to time, you've got a really simple business problem. And you should really be asking yourself why you're spending a lot of time analyzing it in the first place. If you see something like this in your business data, you really need to ask yourself, do I even need a predictive model to work with this data? Okay, so that's perfect positive correlation. Next up, not surprisingly, we have the counter example. And you can see here, it's another contrived example, and it is the average daily temperature on the x-axis and the average monthly energy bill or the monthly energy bill on the y-axis. And these are in degrees Fahrenheit, of course, because I live in the US and that's how we roll. We roll with degrees Fahrenheit. And you can see here, there's some dots. And if we plot a simple linear regression line, which this is, as we know from previous video, we see a downward sloping line from the top left to the bottom right. And that's indicative of negative correlation. And what we can see here, though, is that most of the dots, most of the data points are pretty close to this hypothetical line here. So what we can say is, is that this is near perfect negative correlation. And if you calculate the correlation coefficient for these data, you get negative 0.959, which is very close to negative one, which is the lower bound of the correlation coefficient. And what this tells you is you've got data that's nearly in a straight line with a downward slope like this. Now, once again, in practical terms as a data analyst, if you have near perfect or perfect positive correlation, or if you have near perfect or perfect negative correlation, the results are the same. You can create near perfect predictions. So let's say I was the energy company. I could produce a model that pretty accurately estimates the monthly bill based on the average daily temperature. This, what, this is what this data is telling us. Now, once again, just like in the previous slide, if you see this in your data, you need to stop and ask yourself why. Why are you seeing it in the data? Is it because of a data quality problem or is the problem so simple that maybe I'm overthinking the analysis here? So now we have our frame of reference. And we've talked about this in previous videos, but I just wanted to set the context because now we're gonna talk about something else. We're gonna talk about the pitfalls of correlation. Because as I've demonstrated in previous videos, creating a correlation matrix in Excel, for example, or in R or Python, if you choose those technologies, is exceedingly easy. It's not hard at all. And the information is quite valuable, but you have to use correlation wisely. 
And we're going to talk about the pitfalls now using a very famous set of data known as ANSCOM's quartet. And what it does is it illustrates the pitfalls of just blindly relying on the correlation coefficient without actually taking a deeper look at the data. So to set the context, we've got some data here. Right? This is the first batch from ANSCOM's quartet. And you can see here that there's a general pattern, right? If they're you could imagine, you could put in your mind's eye a nice little linear regression line that has a positive slope. That's not too difficult to do. Now, if you actually calculate the correlation coefficient for these data, it's actually quite good. It's 0.8164, which is quite high, actually. And what that means in practical terms is that you can create pretty decent predictions based on this data. This x-axis has enough information to pretty accurately predict the y-axis. That's what this is telling us. It's not awesome. They're not awesome predictions. They're not near perfect or perfect, but they're pretty good. So this situation is much more common in the business world than the previous two examples. And in fact, even a 0 0.81 cor uh, correlation coefficient is quite high in my experience in business data. But this, this kind of pattern you see here is more realistic. So we're going to use this as a baseline, right? So this is pretty realistic for business data. This is the first of the four data sets in ANSCOM's quartet. And we see here, okay, cool. This data, this pattern of data generates a correlation coefficient of 0.8164. Now, of course, ANSCOM had a point to prove, which is you just cannot blindly rely on the correlation coefficient. So we're going to go through the other three pieces of data, data sets in ANSCOM's quartet to just emphasize this point. So next up, we've got another set of data. And you might be taking a look at this, and I'm not going to circle it with the, the, green, the green oval. And you can see here that, you know, most of the data is along the straight line. So you might be like, oh, you know, it's not too bad. You know, the correlation coefficient, once again, is about the same as the previous data set that we saw. And what we can see here is that most of the data points are along this line, except for this guy up here, which would tell you that since most of the data points are on or very, very close to this hypothetical straight line, the correlation coefficient is going to be quite high. Now, practically, this allows you to have decent predictions because if you think about all these data points, most of the time you're going to be right, right on. Right? If you draw a straight line, like right through here, let's say, you're going to be spot on most of the time. Or even if the line is a little bit slightly skewed up because of this guy right here, it's still going to be pretty close to most of the data points. So you're going to be able to do good predictions, decent predictions. Now, also as the data analyst, you need to ask yourself this. This is extremely important. What about this guy up here, right? If you want to use this terminology, this outlier, if you see this in your business data, you need to investigate it. Because most often, in my experience working with business data, outliers are legit. They aren't the classic, like, um, some grad student miswrote down a measurement in a notebook or something like that, and that was the genesis of the outlier. More often than not, in my experience, they are legit. They happen a lot in the business world, so you can't discount them. So when you see something like this, you should definitely take a look at it. But notice once again here that the correlation coefficient of this set of data is almost the same as the previous example that we saw, which was more like a cloud of points. So this is interesting, right? Because the patterns in the data can actually look wildly different and the correlation coefficients can be quite similar, if not almost exactly the same. And what this means to you as a data analyst is, is that the correlation coefficient is a useful tool, but you just cannot use it blindly because a cloud of points in this particular pattern of data are distinctly different. They are gonna communicate different things about the business to you. Now, next up, things are going to get a little bit more wacky. So here's the third member of ANSCOM's quartet. And you can see here that, okay, we've got some interesting, thing going, some interesting things going on. We've got a cluster of points right here, which are basically vertical. And we'll call this, what, maybe seven, seven-ish on the x-axis. And all these data points are clustered in a vertical line. And then we got this one guy way over here. Now, not surprisingly, if you eyeball this, you'll see that you're probably going to draw a straight line that intersects right here in the middle of this cluster and then intersects through this line. That would be probably what the linear regression line would tend to look like. 
which means that if we calculate the correlation coefficient for these data, not surprisingly, because this is An ANSCOM's quartet, and he had a nefarious purpose, the correlation coefficient is almost exactly the same as the two previous sets of data that we saw, even though this one's even more wildly different. Now, you're also going to get some decent predictions here in this model, in this, uh, in this particular situation, because these dots are all pretty tightly clustered together around 7. So what you would probably do is you would say, hey, look, if the x value is 7, you would just predict the average of all these dots, and you'd do okay. It wouldn't be too bad, and you would miss this guy. Once again, if you want to use the terminology, this outlier would not be predicted very well. So once again, just make sure if you see an outlier or something like this in your business data, check it out because often they're legit. So, but notice what's going on here, right? Notice that the correlation coefficients are all basically the same, but the data, the patterns in the data, the visualizations of the data are actually quite different. Now, of course, lastly, we've got the most egregious example of correlation not actually communicating to you as a data analyst what's really going on in the data. And that's this one right here. Notice that we have a nice parabolic kind of curvature here in the data. Now, what will happen is, is that if you want to calculate the correlation coefficient for these data, basically what happens is you can imagine a straight line that's as close to as many of the data points as possible being drawn. And maybe something like that. And if you calculate the correlation coefficient for this data, here's what you get. Not surprisingly, you get a correlation coefficient that's almost exactly the same as the three previous examples. And of course, this is by design because ANSCOM wanted to emphasize this point. Effectively, even though the correlation coefficient here is quite good at 0.816, you're actually going to get terrible predictions. And the reason for this is simple. Correlation, as I've mentioned in previous videos, is a linear statistic. It is a linear calculation. It relies on a straight line. And if your data is decidedly not straight like this, the correlation coefficient is not going to represent the relationship in the data very well. And in certain cases, it might give you a reasonably high number and you might be all, sweet, this is awesome. I can create awesome predictions with this data. But in fact, it's leading you astray. So the moral of this story is absolutely use correlation. It is a very valuable and useful tool. However, you must always, always visualize your data. That's what's super important about all of the things that you're going to do in analytics. Very rarely are you just going to work with raw numbers. Very rarely, whether that's doing analysis like this or machine learning who knows? All kinds of different things. Generally speaking, you are always going to need to visualize your data as a check against things like this going on. There you have it. The pitfalls of blindly using the correlation statistic in your data analyses. I hope you like the content. If you do, please subscribe to the channel and click that bell to get notifications for my new videos. More generally, if you are a professional, that uses Excel to analyze data, and you're interested in upping your analytics game, check out more of my content and the links below this video in the description. Until next time, please stay healthy, and I wish you very happy data sleuthing.